Um, actually, we were at a, a dinner party, uh, and I forget the occasion, but uh, drama and, and Eng some English faculty were at this, uh, this dinner party. And the conversation came up, uh, Kate Moncrief raised it, about uh, an experience she had uh, encountered, heard of, of a theater in performance, of, of connecting a course with, with uh, performance of it. And so um, Kate and I, some time after that, pursued this conversationally. Um, yes, it would be a good idea if we could co-teach um, a play and have the course as a course and have it culminate in a production at the, at the end of whatever the semester was. And we talked about it, and we <laughs> met again and talked about it. And part of our problem was uh, finding the play. Uh, Kate, of course, is, is uh, the Shakespeare scholar, and so we were leaning, of course, toward uh, a Shakespeare. And we considered some others and discounted them because we didn't feel that the other plays were enough for us to justify spending an entire semester of study on. But with Lear, we felt there's no problem. There is so much to it that we could easily devote a semester, academic semester, to pursuing uh, issues and ideas in King Lear and culminating in a performance with me playing Lear. <laughs> I, think, I think Lear, uh, part of Lear's problem uh, is that um, you know, he's king and has been king for uh, a very long time. The suggestion in the play that he became king for whatever reason at a very young age. Uh, he complains in the play that, um, you know, people, people in effect lied to him. They told him that he had the great hairs in his beard before the black ones were there. What he means is that, I mean, the gray hairs are always associated with wisdom, uh, age and wisdom. And his complaint is that, you know, everyone said I and no to everything I said no and to, uh, I and no to, and it was doing me no great favor, you know, because I discovered that unlike what everyone told me that I was everything, that I'm not everything. And this comes at a crucial point. He's trying to divest himself of rule of all that stuff that goes with managing a large country uh, and dividing it among his daughters, which is not the soundest thing to do, granted. But uh, he figures this is a way to, uh, to retire and to leave it, in a way, intact because these three daughters will be able to manage it and hopefully get along. You know, it's pretty clear that he didn't really understand his daughters, right? but that's the way, <laughs> the way it is. His progress through the play is from, you know, this, this king in all these robes uh, to, um, to the equivalent of, of a beggar who's, who's stripped down. Uh, you know, he, he takes off all this stuff, and while he is physically doing that, uh, he's also losing his wits. He's, he's becoming more and more unhinged. Uh, and he gets to a point where he sees himself in a more natural setting, uh, and he sees himself unencumbered by anything other than him, whatever, and whoever he is. And that seems to be Shakespeare's way of getting him to the point where he can see himself, and where he can, uh, he can stop being obsessed with power, where he can stop being obsessed with punishment, where he can um, see that, that you know, the world uh, often is upside down, that those you know, who ought to be punished get off free, and those who are guilty of little crimes get harsh punishments. And, and, you know, this just reminds me of, and I was listening to the whole debate about capital punishment in, in Maryland, of it, and the difference between, um, you know, the sentences handed out for drugs and, and how some people with 
with crack or cocaine, they're bigger sentences than someone with cocaine or heroin or something. And all of this is, this is part of what, you know, he discovers what he comes to realize. And that, that he was one of those who implemented <laughs> this system, this program. And so, you know, he, he, he comes to see that there's something wrong here. And, and that, you know, stripped of all of this, you take the, the robes and, and the, and the the furred gowns off, and and you're you're nothing. You know, you come down to that, and and once you see yourself as that, then maybe you can get a sense of individuality. Now, the, the line between actor and character is very very thin, uh, and there's no the, the actor is always there, and and hopefully the character is always there, and they work together. It's give and take. It's a sort of marriage, a relationship, uh, and and so there is give and take, and so Lear has to Lear has to find a way to live within the parameters that are me, as I have to try to work within. The Parameters that Shakespeare created. Uh, I mean, every every performance of Lear is different because every actor is different, and so it is personal.